125 million copies sold worldwide. Fifty Shades of Grey is the fastest selling book of all time. In this video today, we're going to break down the movie to see why women are attracted to Christian Grey. So let's jump in with the first scene. No, Anastasia, I'm not gay. <laughs> I apologize. Mr. Gray, Kate can be a little... Intrusive? Curious? What about you? And why don't you ask me something that you want to know? Earlier you said that there are some people who know you well. Why do I get the feeling that that is not true? Ooh. Mr. Gray, your next meeting is in the conference room. Cancel, please. We're not finished here. Yes, sir. No, I, I'm... I, we, I can go. It's fine. I would like to know more about you. Good question. There's really not much to know about me. You said you're an English major? Tell me, was it Charlotte Bronte, Jane Austen, or Thomas Hardy who first made you fall in love with literature? Great question. Hardy. Got her. I would have guessed Jane Austen. Now that's a great way to attract women, asking questions. So here she is on a job interview. She's trying to interview this big businessman, you know, the top, the CEO of this huge company, uh, really successful man. And she's there to interview him. But at the same time, she is attracted to him, but too shy to, you know, go out of the comfort zone of, of being at work. So what he is doing is actually making it personal by asking personal questions that probes into her life, into her passions and likes. And that's a very, very attractive quality because women love to talk about themselves and their passion and purpose in life. And, and when you do that, you're building a connection, you're bonding with uh, another person. And this can also be taken on a first date or in the beginning of a relationship. If you make the woman talk more than yourself, you will be in a good way. Because if you're not and you are the one just talking all the time and, you know, you're, you're answering her questions and, you know, there's an imbalance towards your side of talking. You're talking more than her, probably friend zone. It will not work. You know, you need to let her talk more. So asking the questions about her personal life. And as you see here, first she was um, a bit... Uh, rejecting and, and shy and she's, she said no 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 don't bother by that i will just leave but then he was very smart he was intelligent he was probing that deeper he knew she was interested in writing or uh, you know authorship of these writers and he had some knowledge about it so he asked a very specific question do you like this author that writer or that author better perfect question and it hooked her you know it really got her before it didn't but that question got her so that's very attractive she will leave and she will feel more attractive to her after this meeting because she shared of herself she felt intimacy and connection all right so a very interesting moment here, a very formal meeting by two individuals just doing their job, but turning it into more, you know, of an attraction, attraction, sexual tension, thereby, you know, probing, by connecting and, uh, and sharing personal life. So that's number one. I thought it was you. What the? What a pleasant surprise, Miss Steele. 
<clears throat> just Anna. <clears throat> just Anna. You're in here. I was in the area in business. Needed to pick up a few things. Yeah, right. Are you free? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what can I help you with? Do you stock cable ties? Cable ties, yes, we do. I can show you if you want. Please lead the way, Miss Steele. Just Anna. Is that it? Masking tape. Are you redecorating? No. Um, we have two inch and it's building a playroom. One inch. But the truly self-respecting handyman will have both in his toolbox. Of course he will. Mm, it's rare to find the connoisseur these days. Do you, you want anything else? Yes. Rope. That's impressive. Good girl, Scott. Organized group activities aren't really my thing. So what is your thing? Um, I don't know. Books? <laughs> okay. Rope, tape, cable ties. You're the complete serial killer. Not today. Anything else? What would you recommend? Or a do-it-yourselfer. Um, maybe coveralls? So you protect your clothes? Could just take all my clothes off. Okay. No clothes. I mean, no coveralls. <laughs> <laughs> I can't ever think of anything else. Well, I guess that's it then. Cool. So, uh, he is obviously not there by coincidence, as he says, uh, but everything was planned. He knew that she was working there. He knew that he was going there to, you know, flirt with her and to try to escalate that. So uh, what he did well here was to avoid the friend zone and to uh, cross that uh, border of friend zone and escalating with uh, sexual tension. And he did that by uh, mentioning, you know, having no clothes because then you know, she get into that thoughts and that mindset and she start to think about him in a, in a different light. And that builds some, some sexual tension. And you could see, at least in this scene in the movie, she reacted, she responded to that really well because she was flushing up and she was stumbling on her words and actually uh, you know, said something wrong and then corrected herself. So it worked. And by that, he's sparking a sexual tension in the scene. Instead of just being polite and nice guy, he walks out of there and she might think, you know, that was a really nice guy. He's friendly. Maybe he will be my friend one day. But in this way, he, she will probably think of him more in sexual terms of partnerships or lover or something like that. So very well done. And what he's also doing, he is leading with his energy. So his voice is calm, is deep. So women react to, you know, a deeper tonality of voice. So he pay attention to that. He's also, you know, keeping his gaze on her you know he's focused he's not on his phone he's not looking around too much he's like there with her with his gaze and you know looking into another person's eyes uh, especially when we don't know them that well is a very attractive quality for women and for some women might be even a bit too much you know because it's it's so overwhelming it's like you're seeing into their soul so a very well done scene where you know he is in his masculine you know with his eyes with his tonality of voice and also with the sexual tension of what he is you know in, he's presenting you know this image in her mind basically by you know saying no clothes this works in real life too you know if you do these things women will respond to it it's just the nature of our biologies 
So a great scene pointing out these subtleties here. Let's move on. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Christian Gray. Thank you. I am deeply moved by the great compliment accorded to me today. He now, is so hot. Oh, God. He's so nice. <clears throat> I heard he's gay. Sustainable methods of farming for third world countries. The goal? To help eradicate hunger and poverty across the globe. What we can learn from this scene is that women are attracted to men with confidence and power. It's always been like that and it will always be. And not necessarily, you know, uh, abusive power, but uh, confident power and uh, knowing that they have the power in themselves, but they don't abuse it. They can use it for good. And here is a show, either if, it, if it's real or if it's fake, but his intent is to use his power in his position to help the world to become a better place. And that is a very attractive quality for women because they will see, look, this is a man that got his shit together. He can, you know, he can be safe for me and maybe our future family. So women are biological program to, you know, decipher and look, scan the environment and look for men with high social status or uh, that uh, a man, a husband that can provide safety and security for her and in the long term. So that's why it's a very attractive quality and here he shows like he is speaking in front in front of a big audience right he is representing him himself as the the leader the ceo of this successful company so he's a successful man with a successful company that's trying to do good in the world that's why this scene is very attractive to women and as they play it out here you know even two two women are complimenting on his looks and probably is not only his physical appearance they see there because it's it adds to that he's actually in this position and that adds to his physical appearance most probably first of all he's in the spotlight women see him they notice him he is somebody he's not hiding in the shadow in the corners so he's being seen that is attractive add to his physical attractiveness and secondly he has done something in his world he's actually fulfilling his purpose you know and women might think you know like if i am with this man he will not make me the center of attention become very needy because he also have goals and missions and he is living his purpose, his dream in this world. And so they feel intuitively that, you know, he is doing what he wants and that she can jump on board his mission and become a part of it. But he will not deviate his purpose for her sake, but he will, he will take her along with him. Enlighten me then. All right, a quick scene here and uh, a lot of things going on, uh, backstory and there is a story afterwards, but just taking this scene out of context, all right? So not talking about the backstory and, and how we got here. Basically, he's teasing her, 
it's very attractive. He's not giving everything at once. He's just not putting everything on a table and then there's nothing else there, you know? So it's, it's a bit of mystery he, when he's not giving everything from the get-go. Uh, he is, you know, leaving things to be explored for later. And that's very attractive. It's, it leaves this mysterious adventure to go down upon. So uh, uh, he is initiating this intimate touch and is almost leaning in for a kiss, right? But in the last moment, he changed his mind or maybe he's doing it on purpose and he leaves that. So it's initiating that touch. And as we can see how she's reacting to it, it's like she's biting her lip, almost like she could almost sense and feel that kiss happening, even though they didn't do it. And that's like, it makes her crave for more. She wants to come back for more. And that's a great thing, right? You want her to come back for more. So in this way, he's teasing her. What are you doing for breakfast tomorrow? Where are we going? It's a surprise. I think I've reached my quota of surprises. Ooh. <laughs> We're almost there. She's moody. Mr. Gray, hey, I'll be your tow pilot. How do you do? This is my girlfriend, Anastasia Steele. It's enough to make you wanna try Another very attractive gesture, you know, uh, adventure, surprises. Guys, do this, do this often in your relationship. If you've been in a relationship for a long while and you forgot to do these things, it will grow stale, it will grow boring, the spark and the polarity will diminish. So, you know, introduce surprises and adventures on a regular basis. You don't have to do it every day, but do it. Uh, you know, it's very, very attractive to just like, oh, just come with me. Just drop everything. Just take your clothes and your bag and we're leaving. And we're not going to tell you where we're going and what we're going to do. You will see. You just need, you know, your clothes and your bag. And now we go. And that is like, whoa, so exciting. I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, I'm just going to lean into this. The woman is thinking and I'm just going to trust him. And uh, I'm just going to have this excitement of going on an adventure together. So, so doing something like that is it's very bonding. It's very uh, connecting on an emotional level. And uh, we know that on biological level, scientifically, emo uh, women uh, open sexually through emotions. So you have to go through their heart, through their emotions to be able to connect sexually with them. For men is the reverse, it's the opposite. So it's a paradox here between men and women. And it's a very important fact to understand that we are different and that we open up to intimacy in in slightly different ways. So when we understand that, there can be more harmony, there can be more ease in the relationship, also sexually speaking. So here 
he is, you know, she's been a bit moody recently and you notice that in the car, right? But then uh, when they're in the airplane, she is like bursting with emotions and joy and afterwards they're connecting again. You don't see that in that scene, but so he is playing with her emotions and, you know, women needs to feel emotionally safe to want to make love to you. If they don't feel that, you know, there will be no sex. So sexual intercourse starts way before the actual sex. It starts what you're saying in the morning to her. It starts by, you know, if you're being passive aggressive when you're going out together or if you compliment her and spark her emotions, you know. So, you know, it starts already before that. So you need to make her feel good, happy, connected, in love and to bring that excitement, the form of adventure and surprises. They spark quite the bromance. <laughs> He's a cool guy. Anna, where is your family from? My stepfather lives in Montesano and my mom's in Georgia. Georgia? Which part? Savannah. How nice. Although I do hear it gets rather humid in Georgia at this time of year. Oh my God, it does. It's stifling sometimes. Actually, I'm going to visit her tomorrow. Oh, how nice. Mm -hmm. You hear that, Christian? Some children do visit their parents now and again. Hey, Dad, did you catch the Mariners game? Uh, I heard it went to x rays Oh, Seattle baseball. C'est la quintessence du convention. This is news to me. I don't know what she just said, but it didn't sound like going. What were you going to tell me? Who wants coffee? Actually, I promised Anna a tour of the grounds. Excuse us. Christian, I cannot walk that fast in these shoes. Oh! Solution. When are we going to tell me about Georgia? What? You have no right to be mad. Yeah, but I am mad. Palm twitchingly mad. Ow! You're mine. All mine. You understand? He is claiming her. In this scene, we see it clearly. Like, he wants her. And he makes it visible. He shows it. He's saying that, you know, he's... He's admitting he's getting upset that she hasn't been telling him what she's up to, that he, she's actually leaving. And he's getting upset because, you know, he wants to be with her. And uh, he's claiming her by saying, you're mine. I want to be with you. And he doesn't say that it's sad. He just says he's angry of it, but he shows his intent. Even though there is this fairy tale of like, you know, it's me and you against the world. And we're gonna be together for the rest of our lives. There's only us in a monogamous relationship. You know, that might be a, a, a fairy tale, but that's not the point here. It's the energy that's behind it. No matter how your relationship look like, and if you're in a monogamous, polyamorous, or open, or, you know, committed, focused, whatever kind of relationship type you're in, it's always, always attractive to claim someone. And you can claim in different ways. It doesn't have to be, you're the only one for me. I'm only going to have eyes for you. I'm only going to be with you all the time, you know? Fairy tale, probably not true, you know? But you can claim in other ways of showing intent and proclaiming love publicly and proclaiming love on on social media towards the other or even in private like this and and being vulnerable and saying hey you know i'm i'm actually really sad that you're going you didn't say anything to me because i want to spend time with you and no i love you and you're i want to spend time with the woman that i love with and I want to focus and commit to this relationship. I want to commit to you because I love you. You know, you can proclaim in many different ways. And that is very attractive because it shows that you know what you want and that you're not afraid to say it, to speak it. You can stand behind it. You're not one foot here, one foot there, and walking a little bit in different directions. You know what you want, you're focused, 
and you're clear about your message. The woman that gave birth to me was a crack addict and a prostitute. She died when I was four. I remember certain things. Terrible things. I don't remember her. Sometimes. I think I see her in my dreams. Being vulnerable is one of the most important qualities of human beings and it is super attractive to anyone but it's difficult as fuck because it requires you to actually you know see yourself and be honest with yourself and many of us are not and Christian Grey here managed to be vulnerable but she was asleep, so he still fears to let her in, into her heart. So this scene is, is, is bad in that way of he's not being able to let her fully in. But it's a good way to show his vulnerable side. If he can just do that when she's awake, that would be so much better. He probably needs to heal that wound in himself before he can actually go there with her if a man is only in his dominant and in his like you know full force masculine and not being able to tap into his feminine side that would be a big turn off because you know he's not available for a full spe spectrum of human uh, interactions and human relating so that would be too strict it would be too straightforward dry and rigid so he needs to balance that with his feminine side of being vulnerable and opening up to himself and he, he can't really do it here he has trauma but also this is actually a very common issue amongst relationship today the number one complaint from women to men is that they're not in tune with their emotional body that they feel like they're absent on that level and we cannot only blame men for that because it's a social programming from when uh, boys are young in the school of how you know men should be this like social programming of what is masculinity and uh, that is girly or seen as you know a weakness to show emotions so naturally men tend to avoid that but there is also that we are controlled by our more of our left brain hemisphere which is the analytic one so also here on a brain level we are wired to more analyze and mentalize things than to actually feel them and connect from the emotional body so the women are more predominantly right brained and so they have an easier time to connect with that and also they haven't suffered from that social conditioning as much as men have in this area at least so that's why it's an uphill for men to actually go and see this both on a social level on a biological level but it's so rewarding you know being able to be vulnerable in a relationship is key it's of utmost important for a long-term healthy relationship and it also shows that you are a man that is integrated a balance between the feminine and the masculine energy all right guys that's it thanks for staying until the end please leave a comment below drop a number 
What was your favorite attractive quality of these seven scenes that we have covered now? So pick one, drop the number below and see which one get the most votes. And if you want to see more videos in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Take care, brothers. Have a good one.